My name is Jeremy Fantel. I teach philosophy at the University of Calgary in Alberta, Canada. I'll be talking to you about the value of knowledge, and in particular, a problem with figuring out why it's so good to know things. Intuitively, it seems that knowledge is distinctively valuable. You might call a restaurant to make sure it's open before you leave for dinner. Why? because you need to know it's open before you spend the 20 minutes it takes to drive across town to get there. Of course, you might hope that the restaurant is open, take the risk of driving across town and find that indeed it is open. You might even have a firm belief that the restaurant is open, be supremely confident that it's open. But supreme confidence, even if you're correct, isn't the same as real knowledge. You might always be irrationally, supremely confident that the restaurant you're heading to at some odd hour is open. The one time you're right, you don't have real knowledge, you just got lucky. Knowing that something is true seems more valuable even than luckily true, supreme confidence. The question is, why? One natural explanation is that if you really know something, it will help achieve your goals better than if you don't have knowledge. If you don't know that the restaurant is open, your drive across town could easily be a waste of time. The distinctive value of knowledge on this explanation is that it gets good results. In Plato's dialogue, The Mino, the character Socrates thinks this is not a good explanation. The reason is that if you're correct just by luck, you will achieve your goals just as well as if you have real knowledge. Here's an example that will help show this. Suppose you are a traveler in ancient Greece and you're trying to get to the city of Larissa. You come to a fork in the road. Unbeknownst to you, the left-hand road is the way to Larissa. You become supremely but irrationally confident that the left-hand road is the way to go. Acting on your supreme confidence, you end up at your destination. You end up at your destination just as surely as if you had walked that road hundreds of times before and so knew that the left-hand road is the way to Larissa. When Socrates mentions this example, his emphasis is on leaders. When you follow leaders, leaders with knowledge lead you to success no better than leaders who just are correct by luck. But the point is just as effective when it comes to your own knowledge and not your leader's knowledge. The upshot is that you'll be just as successful when you're guided by mere correct belief as when you're guided by knowledge. Why else might knowledge be more valuable than being correct merely by luck? One possibility is that knowledge tends to be, in Socrates' words, tied down in a more secure way than mere correct belief. Belief, says Socrates, does not stay tied down for long if it is not knowledge. Like the beautiful statues of Daedalus that were said to be so lifelike that unless they were tied down they would escape, beliefs can escape without a tether. Knowledge has reasons or evidence or something that tethers it to your mind and keeps it there. Is Socrates saying that we remember what we know longer than we remember what we merely are very confident in but don't know to be true? That's hard to make plausible. The world is full of dogmatic, stubbornly held beliefs that are not knowledge. And much knowledge, like knowledge of a rarely used telephone number, doesn't last long at all. It flees from the mind as soon as the number is dialed. A second possible interpretation is suggested by the views of the contemporary philosopher Timothy Williamson. He thinks that knowledge tends to be resistant to misleading counter-evidence. Williamson gives an example of a burglar trying to steal a diamond from a house. Suppose the burglar merely truly believes that the diamond is in the house. It's not knowledge, because the burglar only believes that the diamond is in the house because someone incorrectly told him there was a diamond under the bed. If the burglar enters the house and finds no diamond under the bed, he may well give up searching. His one reason for thinking there is a diamond in the house proved wrong. But if he knows there's a diamond in the house, he'll keep on searching until he finds it. Perhaps this is a good alternative interpretation 
of what Socrates meant by saying that knowledge is tied down. We aren't as easily misled out of knowledge as we are out of mere correct belief. Now, whether Williamson and Socrates are right about this explanation of the value of knowledge, and Socrates himself is pretty hesitant about endorsing the explanation, what's come to be called the Mino problem is a problem in need of a solution. How can knowledge be more valuable than merely being confident in the truth, when being confident in the truth leads to success when you act on it just as well as knowledge?